Hello. Uh, yeah, you, mm -hmm, I don't know. I guess you might notice a slight difference in my appearance today. <laughs> uh, I cut my bangs by hand. Well, I mean, they're okay. I just kind of wanted to have my eyebrows showing. Because every time I'd cut it, it would just grow back down to here into my eyes every time. So I was like, okay, that's it. I'm cutting an inch off or whatever, or half an inch. And I did that, and, I, and I'm not super happy with the results, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> they grow back super quick, so I don't really care that much. Anyway, so this video is uh, going to be on uh, tips for how to be, you know, how to present as more... I distracted myself with a fucking reflection on my phone on the window uh, for uh, detransitioners or detransitioners who who thought they were male. This is mostly geared toward those people. This time I have my notes on my phone and on my computer because I started it here. I'm like, you know what? It's too much of a hassle just typing it back up onto my computer or emailing it to myself. So whatever. I'm going with this. The main reason why I'm doing this is because I see a lot of detransition videos and they just everybody looks dejected. They they look like they're having a really horrible time and I feel for that because I had a horrible time as well. <clears throat> and you and at least during like my detransition several years ago, it was like you couldn't just type up uh, it, I, I don't know. I don't know the keywords that I use. You can, like, detransition was not on my brain. That was not a term that I would use. I had no clue. I probably would have said something like, uh, female voice training or female. I don't know. Like, it's, it's, it's hard. So I'm wanting to make this video to make uh, a kind of a resource on um, that kind of information and it's like part of it is like uh, the actual very practical advice another part of it is more what's the word cosmetic uh, or like kind of like things that don't really 100% relate to hormone replacement therapy Unfortunately, I don't have any advice on, I can't speak today, uh, advice for those who had, you know, surgeries um, down here and uh, also below deck. I don't have any for that because I never went through it, but I'm, I'm sure you can look up people who've, who've actually done that and they're like older and more experienced with it and yada 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 but that that that's not here if i did go through it then i would have advice for you but i don't this video is also for well kind of marginally it's kind of for uh trans women who are also like searching for pointers on how to be uh a little bit more feminine and you know presenting more feminine my first point that i have and i mentioned this in a previous video i don't remember what it's called but it says plus advice on it plucking your eyebrows because i mean i don't necessarily think when you're on testosterone it just you ha caterpillars like attract to your face and they're like oh this is a good spot uh what us tomboys have tended to do and when we also go into transitioning to be male we just kind of let them grow and we don't really know and some of us like myself have an unfortunate like brow that's just totally <laughs> oh my god you know totally just flat mine's mine's a little flat so what i've done is um like uh before i pluck them and even before you know totally transitioning too i just had these thick uh, on just ugly eyebrows i i don't like looking back at them in pictures but um yeah so what i did because i know my eyebrows just naturally just are really flat i've plucked them really thin back here almost to where it has like no hair pretty much so it's very thin and i've tried and i do i don't try i pluck 
all the way down here and just try to like sh like not shave it down but you know like thin it down here so that way there's more uh pear mass <laughs> up here and uh sometimes I still experiment with it a little bit to see if I can really get more of an arch going on because an arch <laughs> like so, <laughs> like so, <laughs> no, like arches, not super exaggerated, like drag queen arches, bless them, but y we want to look normal. <laughs> we're not going for queens, we're, we're, we're going for normal and, you know, pass, passable, you know. You want it to have a little bit of an arch. And that looks feminine, because it's just bold and thick right here. I mean, some women go for it, not not my taste. Thinner and an arch is the way to go, that's my thing. And also, just like, guys mostly have really unkempt eyebrows. And I would definitely know this, because my husband has just... <laughs> just, he's off, with the, off to the races, you know? Hair growing anywhere it wants to, and I'm like, I need to pluck your eyebrows. I just need to, even though you can't see it from far away. I I need to pluck them, and I need them to be uniform and good. So yes, guy brows are very bushy, unkempt, and if you want to look more feminine, you would pluck all those little strays, and get your eyebrows like really thin, not super thin. I also not my taste. You can go super thin if you want to, but it's not my taste to go like super, super thin. But also not super, super thick and bold like Sharpie like some <laughs> women do. Um, not my taste, just not my taste. Uh, sometimes, I, I don't really do it much, but sometimes uh, like my hair is getting a little too long. And if I want like a certain, really certain shape, I'll like, uh, I'll like brush it. Like, okay, my hairs aren't moving, but I'll brush the hairs up. That way they're like, ugh, I'll try to, you know, something like that. And then you just trim off the excess and then make, build your shape. That's sometimes what I do. My second point is, I don't really know how extremely effective it is, but I think exercise is just good for you regardless. But, uh, and I don't know how effective it really is right when you're getting off with testosterone and back onto estrogen but exercising to build up your hips and slim down your waist and you know i i, I hear I, I don't know too much about it but like exercising your your, your, your pectorals man your pecs you know getting those all exercised up beefy, you know, gains. Those can uh, emphasize your chest area, which might be nice, but I, I don't know. But anyway, exercises for hips and waist. Obviously, I can't demonstrate right now, <laughs> but uh, I will be having links below in the description. Uh, I think I have like three uh, down there on um, like warm-ups on this specific area of your body which you know is your core and uh the exercises themselves i know that like i'm someone who's stick thin and have like an athletic body so i naturally just don't really have wide hips and a uh, you know very i don't like i don't have an i don't naturally have an hourglass figure but some detransitioners do, but I kind of get this feeling that those who used to have an hourglass figure and then they went on testosterone, they probably like will kind of permanently lose it. So I think um, these exercises will help anyway. You know, anything that helps, I think. I think you should definitely go for it. And uh, second point is it's more is definitely more practical in my opinion. And I wish I had known this, but uh, w when it comes to your hair, like, I mean, unless you were one of those trans guys who were like, I'm going to have really long hair because, you know, some men can pull it off. I mean, good for you. 
you're already like all you're already ahead of us <laughs> but people like me who buzzed it all off and not just in their their pixie cut like who went really really short like it's gonna take a long time to grow all that back and uh, when you're getting off of testosterone like you don't have hair to cover up uh you know your jaw jawline and some of the just the the manly kind of forehead and the, like some of your skin that looks really gross which i'll get on to later um you don't have any of that you don't have any hair to cover that up you you're not gonna look especially in my opinion you're not gonna look like a lesbian and no you're not even you're not gonna pass as one because honestly, passing as a lesbian is, is better than passing as just some guy trying to, you know, get into being a lady again. I don't know. That words. <laughs> Woo. Look, looking like a lesbian is just, it just makes you feel better, in my opinion. Because for me, I would have much rather looked like a lesbian than than whatever the hell I look like at the time. I mean, some detransitioners might might pull it off. I mean, everybody's different. Everybody has a unique face, so it really depends on how you look. And if you still look like kind of like a guy, I would definitely recommend buying a wig uh, so you can cover up some of that stuff, that, that man stuff on your face. Or, um, I was about to say cover your shoulders too and make them look a little bit shorter, but I think that, I think that more applies to trans women. But in any case, wearing a wig is, is like a jump start to having, uh, that more feminine appearance. And that's what I definitely would have wanted at the time because when I, especially with my hair, like I've said in other videos, my hair has to grow into a curl, so it takes like twice as long as people with straight hair. So if there's anybody with curly hair out there, de absolutely go for a wig, go for it. And I know that the cheapest on at least you know American markets are like fifty dollars. They're not like super high quality, but they're they're okay. 60 is a little bit better, but anything above that, obviously, very good. But if you want real hair, you'd have to go into the hundreds or two hundreds. I don't know too much about it. I would definitely do your research and go into that. And also, look, if you're someone who's new to wigs like I am, do your research and look at things that like will really uh, complement your face shape. Like, if, if it's more oval, go for something a little bit more round, uh, or some, or whatever. I don't really know. I'm not a hair expert, <laughs> if you could tell. Um, if it's more boxy, go with straight or something like that. Like, look it up. <laughs> Get on to those hair experts and, and go, and, you know, go with your face shape. Don't just buy a wig and just be like, woohoo! Like, y it, it might take away what you're trying to achieve rather than complement what you have. But, you know, that goes with anyone with any real, with any, you know, real hair with your hairstyle. You, you really want to check that out. Also, I would recommend, uh, especially if you're shy and don't really want people to look at you any more than they already have. Especially being like, huh, you're blue hair. And then they start analyzing you. Wait, is that really a girl? Maybe it's a guy. Like, you just, I don't know. You don't really want that attention, in my opinion. And yeah, if you're insecure. So I would go for a, a wig that's your hair, your natural hair color. So if you're blonde, go for blonde. Go with something that's not, like, striking. Like, blue. <laughs> But if you're not shy and you've always wanted blue hair, go for it. Absolutely. Just try to get, you know, the face shape stuff. You don't have to buy a wig that's like, has the style that you want. You could just buy one with straight hair 
if it's like thick enough you can style it but you can also like get one that's really long and then cut it how however way you want it to so it's like a customizable thing be creative you know this point this next point isn't like super necessary <clears throat> it's extremely optional it really depends on how how you feel but at least in my case because i as like i said my figure is pretty it was very rectangular it's athletic so wearing tight clothing up above especially ones that aren't low cut it's gonna like really put attention onto your waist your guy waist your rectangular guy waist and in my opinion just mm -mm. i mean what i did i pretty much wore like kind of like oversized sweaters a little bit not like super oversized like extra large or anything it was just like medium to large and that took away from my rectangle and um and depending on the uh depending on the type of uh sweater you have it should like at least it does it for me it, like it'll kind of naturally do this thing where it emphasizes your hips a little bit more so you do have a more girlish figure but it's not like you know it's not a silhouette so in my opinion that looks really cute and very feminine and then you know having like skinny jeans underneath i think that's fine and i think wearing like skinny jeans tights skirts i think those are fine because the if you're a detransitioner your legs likely don't look super guyish i don't really know what guy guy legs look like <laughs> thick thighs i don't i don't <laughs> i don't know I, th I think that I just think that looks generally really cute and very very feminine wearing like kind of like an oversized thing like I like to imagine you know like Marilyn Monroe in one, one of her movies where she was uh playing uh Jesus it's been so long since I've seen this movie but she's like uh she's it's kind of meta she's like in plays or other movies I think she's in plays or she's doing musicals and she's with a bunch of other people and I think she's practicing in one scene. Ah, oh, jeez, I wish I I wish I knew what movie it was. But anyway, so she's wearing like pantyhose and uh like I I black pantyhose and I believe a black or pink kind of frumpy sweater on top and it's just <laughs> so good way to go Marilyn <laughs> and this one's also like super optional and I've been thinking about it for myself for a really long time but corsets are expensive and that's my point my next point is you can buy a corset for waist training and don't get a cheap one because they don't do waist training they just kind of slightly support your chest yeah you want like a high quality one and uh, well uh, one that's more fitted to you it's, it, it is expensive but getting that waist instead of your rectangle here's your hourglass you kind of force it but i think it would look nice however that being said it you might get a nice result of an hourglass figure but it's also kind of at the cost of if you wore a binder like i did you might feel weird having like especially one that you know goes all the way down to your um your hips of course that's gonna do the same thing so you might get back into that headspace of oh god i'm i'm doing that again and for me i just i, I uh well i could do it now but at the time like it, ju it just didn't feel right and i did at one point buy a corset that's that's where this is coming from you can do a lot of things with a corset you can wear it above things and then have like a nice skirt underneath or you can have a nice fluffy blouse underneath and that just looks really cute very feminine and you know guys can wear it too you know when they first invented corsets men wore them all the time but that's neither here nor there <laughs> this next point is all y'all should be doing this anyway because you need good posture and bad posture can lead to a lot of 
nasty things. One of the things that are is off the top of my head is migraines. If you have bad posture, you're more likely to get migraines. That's the biggest medical thing right now that I can just shoot at you. You don't want to slouch like I don't know, like what what are the what do the people do? They go like they go like this, and they're like this, and they have their neck up like that. But my point is that if you have good posture and you have your shoulders back and your head and your head, you know, up, a lot of people like to say, pretend there's like a string on the top tip top of your head and it's getting pulled up by the hands of God and, and you know, everything's up. Uh, that's what you should do. There's more videos out there who explain it way better than me, but yeah, you, you know, have your shoulders back. And the thing about having your shoulders back, it gives the appearance of smaller shoulders, which is what you want. Because you might have noticed when I was trying to slouch, having it slouched forward makes your shoulders why do I keep forgetting the word <laughs> shoulders it makes your shoulders look bigger and you don't want that I know those models in the 70s and 80s were going like this like 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 they, they, <laughs> they oh geez okay let me try you know they did it yes they went like ow Ooh, pinch something <laughs> you know, they had their shoulders out and they were trying to emphasize their collarbones. And yes, okay, collarbones are sexy, but you don't need to risk your shoulders looking weird and developing a slouch. That's not cool. You want to be cool, right? <laughs> we all want to be cool and attractive. Come on. And then also, like, you know, so it also brings the goods out too, and and maybe that's some that's kind of a goal that you kind of have, especially someone like me who has very small ones down here. So I have a link to a video of somebody who I really admire. You can go to her channel, and and not just that video, but like you can also check out her other channel for ladylike tips to be more traditionally feminine. I would definitely recommend her. That's definitely going to be in the description below. And that also goes for um, uh, trans women as well. So and now my next point is um, uh, makeup is your best friend. When you're first detransitioning, you want to be smart with it. And like you're not just painting your face to have pretty colors on there. You actually have to like sculpt it. But yeah, contouring is also very good. I don't personally do it. Sometimes I do, and then I go, oh, <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> I'm horrible at this. You want to do it, especially if you have more of a broader jaw. You'd want to like try to make an illusion of slimming it down. There's videos out there with trans women. I didn't even think about this part. If I did, I would have also said, like, in the description, but I don't have any. I only did my homework for some things, guys. Gosh, leave me alone. Anyway, so there's, there's some, probably actually a lot of trans women out there who have videos on how to do your uh, makeup for, like, a more masculine face before they get um, facial feminization surgery. I wish I had pointers, but I don't really... Like, I'm trying my best with my own makeup, so, like, leave me alone. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing, so. But, definitely, makeup is a good source. Go to those tutorials. I, I think I actually have one tutorial I might be able to show you. And then that can go into a whole rabbit hole of other tutorials. My recommendation, at least for, like, if you want a more natural look, I guess, You'd want to definitely start out with uh, a foundation, like a really good one. My skin, when I was first detransitioning, it just, ugh, it looked so bad on my face. Like it looked and felt super dry and just more pimples everywhere. It just, I, I, and then like my skin was so dry that just the creases were emphasized on my 
freaking forehead and it was so ugly. Good, good foundation from medium to full coverage to just cover that nasty skin up. <laughs> Again, like I'm not, I'm not a guru in any sense of the word. I'm just, I'm, I'm still learning as I'm going. But I know that medium to full is, is really good for that kind of skin. Speaking of skin. Skin, my next point is have a skincare routine. What I need is, like I said, dry skin, so moisturizer and exfoliating and yada yada yada. But if you had like acne, which fortunately I never had, you know, do go with that kind of stuff. You know, make your skin look good again. <laughs> I mean, I think everybody should have a skincare routine. Like, guys, anybody, they should. Because it's just a matter of taking care of yourself. It's like taking a shower, you know? You want to get the stink off you. Why don't you get the nasty dead skin cells off you? You know? And then you'll have less pimples in general. Anyway, I mentioned this next point uh, in a previous video, but, um, I mean, I'm, I don't really have anything new for it, but... <laughs> A wax, wax that body hair. Just do it. I I know it hurts, but just do it. What I did in the very beginning is waxing is a quick fix. That's why I went for it. And just like I waxed my shoulders, my entire back. I did uh my upper lip, bottom, uh, or my my jaw. I think I might have also done my chest and pro I think I just did a whole body except for my legs. And that was very good. It, it was like liberating. Like it <laughs> I'm not a lizard person, but <laughs> at least I don't think I am. Uh it was like shedding, you know, that that skin. Uh, you know, from you know you know when a snake slithers out of its old skin and now you're brand new and that old skin was you trying to be a trans man that's gone now get that out of here it, it felt very good whereas if you just kept it and waited for the hair to just thin on thin out on its own i don't think it'd have nearly the same effect but you know each to their own it doesn't really matter this is what i wanted to do it made me feel good and waxing keeps the hair away a little bit longer than just shaving it. I would if you're if you're insecure definitely and uh you just want to avoid the the waxing person at the salon or whatever giving you strange looks cuz it's just like wow. And they might even use a different wax for you cuz they think you're a dude, so it's like, <laughs> just, mm. <laughs> don't want to go with that. I would recommend if you have a friend, a mom, like I did, <laughs> or an aunt, or just a female relative, or anybody <laughs> who, uh, <laughs> you're, oh Jesus, this is a bad joke, you're a local neighborhood twink, if, <laughs> no, <laughs> if they have a waxing kit, Go to them, especially for hair along your face. Some people might have it way worse than I do. Especially if you have like darker skin. Your hair is going to be more dark and more pronounced. But some people have uh, really pale skin and they also have dark hair. I don't, I don't know. Like for me, my hair is actually very naturally orange. So when it grows out, it's more orange. So my peach fuzz is kind of orange when it comes out. It's not peach fuzz. It's a little bit thicker than that. So I'm a little bit, a teensy bit lucky that my hair kind of grows out that way. But I can still feel it and it's really gross. And I hate the feeling of the facial hair because it's just a little tough and they're pokey. hate it. But, um, but some women and some of you trans women out there have thicker, darker hairs. So you might be able to... Especially, you know, obviously, if you have dark hair against lighter skin, uh, you'll be eligible for um, uh, laser hair removal and electrolysis and stuff. 
I can't do it. <laughs> I'm so lucky to have orange hair, right? Cause I can't even <laughs> remove remove this hair, but yeah, I don't know. I would actually consider kind of lucky having darker hair on my skin, cause then you can actually laser it off. Although maybe somebody has more knowledge on that than I do, but th this is what I'm going off of. Some people recommend like dyeing your hair when it grows out, but I'm like, that's a lot of time to take. You know, I just like I'm not. I'm not gonna just go around sporting a dyed black uh, peach fuzz, but not peach fuzz, you know? It's, yeah, but if, you know, if you don't have the money, you, know, you can also. I use an epilator, a small one for here, and then a larger one for my legs. And that keeps the hairs gone for a little while. It's kind of like, I don't know if you heard fireworks, but there's some fireworks. It's, you know, July 7th right now, but. People have their excess because they couldn't, you know, fire them off then. It's illegal here, but, uh, whatever, guys. You know, whatever. They can't, the coppers can't track me. I also mentioned this before. I mentioned it in a previous one. And, uh, I mentioned about dating. I know there's some detransitioners out there that are like, I, I don't know if I can do it, like, <laughs> because I kind of look like a guy right now, and, and, um, if you're a detransitioner and you're lesbian, that's kind of weird, you know, because other lesbians don't really want to, well, I mean, some of them might, but, um, they don't tend to want to date a woman who looks exactly like a dude and kind of acts like one too. Uh, and you know, if you're straight like me, then, and you want to get a guy's attention, then they're going to be like, mm. <laughs> You know, like, I don't want to be bamboozled, so I'm not going to risk it, you know. When you, like, show up to your date and you're like, Hello, guys! <laughs> Hello, my name's Monica! <laughs> I, can't, I can't do a guy voice and I don't want to do one, but... <laughs> nice to meet you, pal! And he's like, um... <laughs> sake, no, I'm not going to shake your hand. Even though you might be, um, biologically female as a detransitioner when you meet that person in you know face to face finally uh they're gonna be surprised at your voice absolutely it happened to me it happened once but it like really like kind of not a good experience i did not have a fun time it wasn't like woohoo now i know guys Woo! i, I, I kind of struggled but um yeah, and and especially when you're trying to date a guy, they're gonna they're not gonna be as forgiving because a lot of men don't like number one, they likely don't want to be seen as gay. They don't want to, or they just or they're just you know very protective of their masculinity. Oh, you you'd want to protect yourself first by saying that you are a detransitioner. You were FTM, but now you're g back to female, and you got you got to warn people that th your voice sounds like this, and yeah, you don't have to say anything about your body, but definitely mention your voice. Like it's deeper, it might kind of throw you off guard, so be prepared for that. But like, I am genuinely. A person with a vagina so take it or leave it you know because otherwise you're just gonna be in a world of hurt and you might actually literally be depending on where you are i mean where i am i'm in a more liberal area so i just kind of got away with a little a little bit of uh i don't is this weird you know like a little you know just a little kind of like a little slap on the wrist that's what i got but m some people might actually be weirdly beat up about it or worse i don't want to say those words but i think we all kind of know where it could end up and so you, you do want to disclose these things absolutely and i know there's some people out there who say well well you're naturally a woman so and there's other women out there who naturally have you know deep voices and it's like Yes, they do. And, you know, my mom naturally has a deep voice. 
Like, you made that decision. You made that decision to have your voice unnaturally like this. And I think that's just the major difference here. And it ju I just think that a woman who naturally has a deep voice and she hasn't gone testosterone or anything, like, she's going to have that, like, that, that girl accent. And it's going to be more obvious that she's a woman. But my point is, is like, you made the decision to have this voice. So you should disclose it to other people. Besides, it's like, photos, like, like on a dating profile photos, you're going to have like the ones that are most flattering and most feminine while you're freshly detransitioning. And uh, whereas the reality is, if you take away this, that, the other detail or that angle and you move it over here, it's going to look more like a guy. So when that person, that date meets you in person, uh, they're going to see those angles that make you look more like a guy and they're going to probably start questioning. It, it sucks, but I think it's better to be safe than sorry. And when it happened to me, I felt very insecure. And I couldn't talk to anybody about it because nobody understood. None of my friends got it because they, they don't have that problem. Yeah, so I was very alone in that experience. And that was just very disheartening. Uh, my second to last point is um, don't be afraid to suddenly switch from male to female. Or if, I guess in this case, if you're a trans woman, uh, male to female. Because if you drag it out, Number one, you will feel uncomfortable. Number two, other people around you will be uncomfortable and confused. So, you, you, like, while you're doing it, obviously, tell other people. Well, well, her name is Kaylin, but her username is O O H space C A E. She uh, made a video on uh, how to come out to your a workplace as um, as a detransitioner and I think that's really good information to uh, know so I, I would go to her channel I might actually just link it down as well you can get pointers on how to come out in that direction but also you know come out to your family tell them about it and uh, anyone else relevant if you're doing it in school tell your peers because when I did it, when I detransitioned, I told, yeah, like I told my family and, uh, and I told one of my coworkers and I felt like I didn't have many friends at the time. So I didn't really tell them who was, who, who am I going to tell if there's no one around? I mean, for me, when I came, like coming out to my family <clears throat> as a detransitioner was one thing, but like presenting as female to them, I felt very weird, very insecure, very ugly, very man manly i looked too manly and i just i did not like the way i looked but um i mean if i had pointers on how to look more feminine with what i was working with i would have had more confidence which is the point of why i'm making this video with my tomboy <clears throat> background i didn't want to be you know admitting defeat that like okay yeah makeup's good blah blah, blah you know so there, there was also that element uh, that layer that, that was added to it but really just like if you're smart about it and you know your resources just just boom be be female again just do it i think at least telling people around you about it is one thing but if like if you're still like very insecure about your appearance you can go slow with it if you wanted to but it might just be better to you know yank that band-aid off and just do it and it's you know what it's it's whatever you're most comfortable with finally my last point is voice training this one's the most crucial part because any trans woman will tell you like you can look exactly like a woman but the moment you speak it just destroys everything and everybody just immediately assumes you have a dick so voice train and for this one i do have links in the description the, um i got two one of them's to a playlist that i made 
hopefully I can, if I'm tech savvy enough, I'll be able to like make it public and, and hopefully people can see it. And then another one to a voice training lessons. I don't remember her username, but, um, uh, I don't remember her name either. Ziana? I don't, I don't know, but I'm going to link to one of her playlists of all her trans voice uh, voice lessons and stuff. Yeah, the uh, the playlist is going to be like full of like advice, pointers, and uh, even some lessons in there. And like some of some of them will explain like the larynx and all the whatever bits are in the throat. I don't know. I'm not a technical person, so it doesn't help me when somebody says, oh, this muscle and that muscle and this cartilage does this and then it needs to go over and like when you swallow and blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't... That's not my ballpark. It doesn't make sense to me. So I also mostly focus on results. So I don't care about larynx and the little thing in your throat that men have it this big and women have it this big and then or this small and then their men's throats are like this and their women's throats are like I don't I don't give a crap <laughs> just tell me how to do it that's all I care about for me I didn't learn from these people I mostly learned from um uh Theron Meyer who unfortunately I have no idea there's probably some weird drama around her but she deleted her channel so unfortunately I can't link to that but she had like really good points on like uh and not many people seem to say this I have one video who actually finally says it but um like you have to drink water and if you start feeling like you're your throat starting to hurt stop and rest otherwise you're gonna like permanently destroy stuff in here and um, you don't want to do that obviously and she was the one she was finally one of those people who didn't say start with your mickey mouse voice and then go down and a lot of people i find have said the mickey mouse voice and going down to a more comfortable position does not work for them it didn't work for me it just made me feel ridiculous and just embarrassing. And uh, another point I have is um, record yourself while you do it so you can uh, you can compare uh, how you sounded before. Which in, for me that was like so nice to be able to hear. Like I can't remember what my pitch was. It was like a hundred. In 40, 150 kind of range. I think my lowest was 124. And then, and then I managed to like get it up gradually up to like 200 ish. And that's just where my voice kind of just stayed. And um, so it's really good to record yourself and see that progress. So then you can actually feel like you're getting somewhere. I, I, I don't know how to do links for like android stuff so i'm i'm just gonna like list what the apps are that helped me uh there's two of them well i guess three but you could go with any re record audio recording thing you can even like get audacity on your desktop or whatever that one's an easy one but uh yeah the trans voice pitch analyzer stuff like i have them described below you know, some people say to go with like little phrases um, some people, you, like, tiny little phrases that you get to repeat over and over again, and you try to, like, you know, raise your chest voice from your, uh, to your neck, and some people say it to your nose. I mean, it's whatever is, it's whatever you want, really. And some voice trainers will say, oh, just have, like, a book in front of you and start saying that, and... I find both phrases and reading uh, like a page or like a paragraph out loud is easier because like for me I don't really like repeating heat from fire fire from heat like I don't I don't like repeating phrases that much because it's very tedious to me uh, I would just rather be saying a series of words some people also recommend counting at least for a warm up uh, Theron Meyer was saying stuff about uh, like certain words are like easier 
on the throat and getting it uh, in your, you know, your nose and mouth area. So she was focusing on M and N. I really wish she still had those up. I, I, I don't know. Maybe some people can find them. But And another person also said, I don't remember who, but um, they said, like, don't worry about, like, your feminine accent. Just just focus on your pitch. And yes, there are women who naturally have deep, deep voices with a deeper pitch, but they still sound like women. But some people might want a higher pitch because they want to sound like somebody else. They want to sound a certain way. Those are my tips. This is what I needed to hear at the time. I forget what my next video is going to be on off the top of my head, but I have, I have it all written down. I'm going to go with something more informative. I'm going to try to keep this channel more informative on how to do these things, but, um, yeah, I might even, uh, on 4th of July, I was talking with uh, my cousin's girlfriend and she was saying like, oh, I could get my friend Drew on because, uh, he's, uh, he was, he is FTM. I, I might, I might, I don't, I don't really know how to fit another person onto my channel, but we'll see. I don't know, but I think it might be good to get like an FTM opinion on this, so. I don't know when that'll be, and oh, and eventually at some point I'm gonna try and interview my mom and get like the parents' perspective on this. I don't know when any of this is gonna be, but we'll we'll just see. I'll see what I can do. So yes, yeah, so for now, that's all I have for today. <laughs> yeah. So goodbye. <laughs>